Welcome back everybody, Chris Gott, Healthy Living with Chris Gott, and today we are in the Ahmad Airport, ready to head to Egypt. Robin, what do you think? It's pretty exciting, we'll show you what it looks like when we get there. Yep, so stay tuned. Here in Egypt. Even the gate is original. So we just passed through the gate. That's the gate of Cairo. It's a water for poor people because to go to the river bring water was you know, you pay money for it. Right. So, Sabil is for water, Hanka is for studying, hospital for treating. Everything is free. A rich person or a ruler, ruler will build anything here. From this fort, it's for free. You know, you find this everywhere. And as we said, two sides of the kind. The autocratic country is very safe country. Very safe. It's not our age. <laughs> We're a little older than that. No, you're not my age. Yeah, we are. Oh yeah, she's 65. <laughs> yeah, she's 65. 60. So we're stopping here for coffee. Looks like a pretty cool place. What do you think, Robin? And yeah, we're stopping here for tea with Mitt. We see two mosques here, the father and the son they call yeah. it. in the tomb. Kalawan. Mansur Kalawan. Spectacular mosque here. It shows the mid 14th century right here. This is where we're at. This is where they would get clean so they could be pure to be able to pray in the mosque. Camel meatballs and pigeon soup and duck soup. We're, we're vegan though, so we're going with the vegan stuff. This house contains two sections. The first section, Abdul Wahab Tablawi, the first builder of this house. The second build is the second section here by Ismail Shalabi. He was very rich. I mean, it looks like he's tearing away the structure that's actually holding him up. I wouldn't want to be in that crane. So in the back there, you can see the pyramids. So we're at the Mina house. That's where we're going to be staying. And you get a great view of the pyramids here. All right, so we're in our room, and I just want to show you the view from our balcony. Here's our view from the balcony from our room. So we actually get to see the pyramids right from our room. Just hanging out at the pool for a little bit. What do you think, Robin? Very nice and relaxing. Yep, very relaxing. So this is called Coptic Cairo, or Old Cairo. We're going to the museum. And then a huge shop. This belongs to two. So this is the oldest synagogue in Egypt. This is the first church in Egypt. 
And actually, it's so old that Jesus and his family actually hid here when they were uh, traveling. This is for baptism. The well that Jesus drank from when he was hiding in the crypt. So we're going to head down the crypt where they actually hid in this church. So this is called the Hanging Church. So it's called the Hanging Church because it's built on top of the fortress. Here you can see the fortress is down there and the church is on top of it. So we are now visiting the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. It's going to be cool. All right, we're going to go check out some mummies. What do you think, Robin? Royal mummies. Royal mummies. when they do mummification. These are the tools they use, protecting goddesses. It is the name of the king, you know, this frame. The traffic in Cairo is basically free for all. You just go, it's pretty funny. We're going to head into that museum, and this is actually where the uprising was 10 years ago in this square. So, pretty interesting. It was right over there. This is one strange looking lion. I'm sure there's some sort of significance for that. In the entryway, we just walked in. This dude's got a big goatee. This is like an entrance to a tomb and they brought it here to the museum to make an entrance to a room in the museum. This piece is actually in the 10 pound note. This is a female king. This is a rare female sphinx for the female king that I just talked about. These are conehead people. There's our cone head. So Nefertiti was the cone head lady. This is a Tukin Hammond Museum. they're packing up that to move it to the new museum but that actually he was in there King Tut was in there and it was many other boxes that were inside that box it's a throne and the thick layer of gold the king was represented sitting in his throne and his wife is perfuming him this is a statue of Anubis and all this stuff was actually in the tomb with uh, King Tuck when they found it. Portable chair. Yes, with geese, two geese is the set of the legs. All right, we are at Sky Rim restaurant. We're gonna eat lunch here. But I just wanna show you a little bit of, of the view because you get to see the valley from here. There's the valley. It's a pretty good view. So what's great is this restaurant allows you to have all vegan options, I'll show you that. Robin, what do you think? Pretty good. Plate, it's all vegan. It's delicious. Robin's enjoying hers. Heading to the market and there is one big mosque right there. Another mosque. Grand, grandson of Muhammad the Prophet. This is the market. You enjoying the market, Robin? Absolutely, it's what I love. Yep, she loves markets. You can't have too many markets.
I'm sorry. <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh, uh, United States. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. San Diego. Vegan, vegan means no animal products for anything. Really? Yeah. This one we look all white now. And I sell perfume, essential. This one we call it white meat. And I have patchouli. You heard about the patchouli? And I have a lotus flower. You heard about lotus flower? And I have you have the rose food. And we have Egyptian mask. In America, everybody will like that. White rose. You heard about white rose? I have argan oils, argan oils, coconut oils, castor, argan oils, aloe vera, coconut. Oh. Yes, this guy's actually brushing his horse while he's in traffic. Today is pyramid day and we're going to do this by time frame. So this is the first, the oldest of the pyramids. This is Saqqara. That's a step pyramid and it's the first building ever in the history of the world. So we're going to go check it out. Heading through the gate. Up there. These are actually doors. These big, gigantic doors. And this will swing by and shut. Pretty awesome structure, knowing that it's like nearly 5,000 years old. This is one awesome structure. That shaft is 28 meters deep. There is a staircase that leads you down. That is actually considered a pyramid over there, made out of rubble. So I guess that pharaoh wasn't as important as some others. And the rest of these buildings, these are all tombs. Not necessarily for kings, but for everybody else. We're getting kind of close to this pyramid. Well, we're right at the... Right at the top of it, so this is pretty cool. Behind me, you can see there's a couple of more smaller pyramids that kind of collapsed, but they're still considered pyramids. All right, so we are moving on to the next pyramid. This would be bent and red. What do you think, Robin? Yep, it's going to be exciting. Going to be exciting. All right, so we are in Dashur. Like I said, we're going to look at the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. That's obviously the Bent Pyramid, you can see because it's, well, well, it's bent. So you can tell this one's older because it's uh, bent, but it's like the second attempt to build a true pyramid. And we're going to just keep progressing on the timeline here. Pretty cool. You can see the size of this thing by the people in front of me. All right, we're going to be going inside. So I got some steps here that we're going up. We're gonna go inside the pyramid. That's what we're gonna to go to next. Oh, we are inside the pyramid. It's a little, little tight in here. So as you can see, it's a little tight in there. A little dark, but pretty cool to tell you the truth. This thing's not only getting smaller, but it's actually tilting on an angle a little bit. But I like to say, it's pretty interesting. All right, so now we're going to be climbing up some stairs. We're going to start 
tightening up a little bit. I have to say, if you're a little claustrophobic, this is probably not for you. It's a little tight coming down. It's a little more opened up once you get down here, and now we're just going up these steps, and we'll see what's up there. At the top, and it keeps going. I think this is about as far as we're gonna go. You can see it continues on, even up here. That's probably the top of the pyramid right there. Not sure what that leads to. Not sure what's in this hole, but I'm gonna video a little bit. Steps are a little steep here inside the pyramid. I have to say this is pretty cool being inside a pyramid. All right, now for that long trip up. All right, well, that was the first time I was ever inside a pyramid. It was a little nerve wracking, but it was, uh, you know, one of those things you have to do if you have the chance. What do you think, Robin? Yeah, I just bumped my head a couple times. I went first so I could warn Chris. Yeah, so she's smaller than me, so. Um, uh, I don't have claustrophobia, <laughs> but it was a little claustrophobic. Yeah, I would definitely say if you have claustrophobia, don't do this. Don't go in a pyramid. It's very small and uh, a little nerve wracking because you're underneath this gigantic rock that was built nearly 5,000 years ago. All right, so now we're at the Red Pyramid, and this is the first true pyramid ever built, and it's reddish, so I'm gonna show you that because of the material that they use, and it's 30-some stories high. Can you tell you about how it was about 30-some stories high? And nearly 5,000 years old. And there she is. And you see there's an entrance up there. We're probably not gonna go in this one because we're gonna save that for the Great Pyramid. We've been in once you're in a pyramid, it's a little tight in there, so we're going to wait until the uh, Great Pyramid to go in there. Another view of this incredible pyramid, which is the first true pyramid. All right, we're done here, and now we're on our way to see the Great Pyramids of Giza. That's the Great Pyramid in front of us. Okay, on to Pyramid number three. So we are at the Great Pyramid of Giza. There's another one back there. It's pretty cool. Well, we're gonna go on a quick camel ride, it looks like. I usually don't typically like to sit on animals, but I'll make an exception this one time. Hello, Mr. Campbell. Okay. Oh boy. You having fun, Robin? view from lunch pretty nice view I have to say it's not often you get a view like that just awesome we're getting an awesome vegan lunch here the rice is in shape of a pyramid but all of this is vegan so we're gonna dive in here's another view at lunch but outside this is incredible Here we are at the entrance. That's the entrance to the Great Pyramid. All right, so we're actually climbing up the side of the pyramid right now, and we'll soon be to the entrance. Inside the Great Pyramid. So this tunnel is a little bit bigger, but there's no air in this one. So it's a little tougher. So we are actually inside the pyramid now. This is very claustrophobic though. This is new. We gotta step up this ladder and we can continue to go up. Let me say it's a little hot in here. It's 100 degrees outside and it's very congested, very small, but we're told that it's worth it when you get to the end. That's where we came from. This is where we're going. This is a sarcophagus. 
Okay, on the way back down, what do you what do you think? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. Glad we did it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, this is pretty cool. Unlike the other pyramid, what I would say is if you're claustrophobic, this is probably not for you. But otherwise, this one is opened up a little bit more. If you're just going to do one, do the Great Pyramid. The other ones that we did are a little bit more, you know, a little smaller. So you probably want to change that up a little bit. We're almost down, but you can see how close these walls are. Well, we're almost out. And now we're at the part that's a little bit taller, so it's a little easier to get through. Well, we made it. And now we just need to get down off of the pyramid. Now we're on the outside. So you can see there's a little bit of a ledge there, but you know we're not gonna fall down. But we were inside the middle of this thing. What do you think, Robin, of the experience? It was pretty cool. We almost turned back because it was really stuffy. But some really nice lady from Australia or somewhere said, it's not so bad, just put your head down and go. So we did, and I'm glad we did. So that's the world famous Sphinx. done with the pyramids it's really hot it's like 100 degrees out of here so I'm gonna try some Egyptian beer actually not bad after a long day Say how's it going. oh it's going great how's yeah going? yeah I'm having a great time aren't you hot in that <laughs> <laughs> is it really hot, yeah, it's a hot. <laughs> <laughs> you should take the jacket off but, but they won't allow you? Oh, okay. Uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep the we uniform. Can replace our rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Alright, thanks. Bye. Egypt at night. Tunis village. Because we went once, we went once. It was during the Corona time. And uh, uh, yes, you have people, but not a lot. But every day when I, I, I go home by car, I see because I pass uh, like a bridge uh, and I see how lot of people there are there. No, it's not for me. No, it's, it's very interesting. But I cannot go where it's crowded now. I'm not a big market guy. She she likes the market. I'm not a big market guy. You have to go then. You have to go then. Yeah, we went. But take care. Yeah, we did. We're in Tunis Village and yes, that's a cow on the ceiling. Pretty interesting. All right, we're in a Jeep and we're ready to go to the desert. What do you think, Robin? Yep, we're gonna see some whale bones that are 35 million years old. 35 million year old whale bones. It's gonna be pretty cool. So this is the valley of the whales we're heading to. Roading it, we're in the desert. Going down the dunes. <laughs> show you a little bit around because it's a couple of buildings it's pretty cool we made it to where the whale bones are so we're gonna go check it out it's way out here in the middle of the desert what do you think Robin so far very hot it's over 100 degrees right now So these are two complete whale, prehistoric whale fossils, and they built the museum around here, so they left these where they found them. And those bones are 35 million years old, so pretty, pretty prehistoric. This 
dude is 240 million years old. It doesn't look bad for 240 million. Now that we're done with the museum, we're gonna go hike a little bit to some of the whale bones that are actually still in the ground. You can see this one that's still in the ground. That's really cool. To the significance of this whole place is that this used to be a sea here, which is why the whales are here. But obviously it's not a sea anymore, it's a desert. So out here in the Sierra, there's two lakes. Very cool restaurant here. It's actually a boutique hotel listed in a list of like uh, boutique hotels around the world. And so it's a hotel that's like 13 rooms or something. It's, it's really beautiful. This is one of the rooms here, so we're gonna check it out. There's a nice fireplace. Bathroom back there, really nice. You can see why people stay here. This hotel is called Le Zeeb, and the restaurant we're in that's here is called the Blue Donkey. You can see the Blue Donkey on the ceiling there. <laughs> we got our vegan meal here. So we're going to start with lentil soup, right? Yeah, and cumin and croutons. All right. Fun in Cairo. <laughs> we're done with Cairo for the time being, and we are now gonna fly to Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel. And it's gonna take us two flights to get there, even though they're very short flights. So we're gonna take a plane, it's gonna land, and then it's gonna take off again, we're gonna get there. And then we're flying back to Aswan after we do a small tour in Abu Simbel. So it's gonna be a, a long day of flying, I think, today. What do you think, Robin? Yeah, we'll see what it has to offer. Come to our gate, you see these guys in hazmat suits. Uh, I'm gonna try to stay away from them. I'm glad there's a big piece of glass between me and them right now. They're going to Algiers. What was your name again? Khaled. 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 All right, we're in Abu Simbel, and we're ready to check out the temple. What do you think, Robin? You ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So that's the Nasser Lake over there. It's the largest man-made lake in the world. Oh. Oh, wow. oh. That's a nice trip. Oh, yes. That was just amazing. Oh, that's where we were, oh, too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You are following us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, told Emily we said hi. I don't know if you ever see that show. Emily in Paris. Oh, yes. You know that I live just, um, you know, the Italian restaurant? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, the famous one. I, I live just in front of it. Oh, really? So, so it's, it's a real restaurant? Yeah, it's a real restaurant. Oh, that's uh, cool. And it's really funny because all tourists are coming into oh, this place. Funny. So we're at the temple, and I'm going to show you this. This is amazing, though. Right, we're going to go check this temple out. This is the temple for Ramses II. This is an amazing temple built into the rock. And if you see the door there, the light will shine into the temple just two days out of the year, and that's February 22nd and October 22nd. And they did that on purpose, so it's pretty cool. So if you actually are around here those days, you'll actually get a better view than we are inside. We all lit up. So 
amazing the amount of hieroglyphics that are all over this, and they know what they say because they've studied this and they know how to read hieroglyphics. So they know the stories that are behind it. So obviously these etches and stuff are almost 5,000 years old. And this is like I said, Ramses II. We're gonna go next after this to his wife's te uh, temple, which is Nefertari. kind of cool is they got all these tunnels in here too i just showed you one we're going to go into this one next what do you think robin yeah i'm going to check it out pretty wild how they have multiple offshoots of rooms you see they got animals up there she even has hieroglyphics up on the ceiling, too. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. And this, this is one big temple. It just keeps going on and on and on. We'll check out what's way back there. It looks like some more statues. Even the birds are checking it out. So what do you think of these statues, Robin? It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, so it's really, really cool. Not sure what's in this hole, but they got it blocked off. And it's pretty dark in there. Uh, Robin's shining a little bit of light in there. Just a big empty nothing hole. There's just so many rooms here, so many offshoots. Looks like this one has an ancient fire hydrant thing, fire extinguisher. 5,000 years ago. Pretty amazing stuff here. See how big these guys are. And that's the exit or the entrance. So we're done with that. That was awesome. It was incredible. And now we're going to go to Nefertari, the queen, and we're going to check out her temple. So that was the temple for Ramses II. And over here, not far away, is the temple for Nefertari. This is Queen Nefertari's. It's a little smaller than Ramses II. Some views out here outside the temple. It's a really beautiful view out here you see that boat over there that's just cruising this lake so this is just a lake this is not the Nile it's a man-made lake like I mentioned earlier uh, and people just take little cruises and go around to relax but you don't really see a whole lot when you're out there Hi. <laughs> Weren't you on our last flight? <laughs> I think you were. <laughs> All right, we're in Oslo. We're taking a boat to the hotel. We're going to hotel now. It's an island in the Nile. Island in the Nile. What's that? Passport, your passport. All right, so we just checked into our hotel. It's called the Moving Pick. It's in Ashwan, and we are on an island. It's pretty cool. You have to actually take a boat to go out to anywhere. So there's pluses and minuses to that, obviously, because you're kind of stuck on an island, but you can take the boat and go anywhere. But what they did, they did us a nice little favor here. I'll show it to you. We checked into our room, and they gave us uh, some nice treats, chocolate. They give us a bunch of fruit, including a pineapple. Not sure how we're going to eat that one. And then they gave us some nuts and some more nuts and more nuts. And then these macaroons. I'm not sure if those macaroons are vegan. Not a bad view at breakfast. That's the Nile River back there. So this is our view from our hotel in Aswan. And that's the Nile River back there. Yep, can't complain about the view. And we're going to be on that Nile. Pretty shortly, we're going to be on a four-day cruise of the Nile. All right, we are at the high dam. So this is it, the high dam. Welcome to the high dam. Here we are on top of the high dam. The high dam is the biggest dam the Egyptians have made in the 20th century. It's the biggest construction 
the people have made in the 20th century, according to the UN. This massive dam is a concrete building. The height of the high dam is 111 meters. The long is almost four kilometers. The wide of the base is 990 meters, which is almost one kilometer. And the top wide is only 40 meters, which it looks like a pyramid shape. This pyramid shape equals 17 times bigger than the Great Pyramid in Giza. So it's a massive dam. So this dam also signifies the beginning of the Nile and it goes all the way up to the Mediterranean. That's right. But this is the start of it right here. So on the other side of the Nile, on the other side of the, the dam, is Lake Nasser, which is the biggest man-made lake in the world. And then the Nile does pick up over there on the other side of the lake. It's the biggest source of freshwater fish in Africa. This dam, you know, created this lake and one disadvantage is it actually, actually covered up the ancient kingdom of Nubia and so obviously it's underwater now so that was the only disadvantage but otherwise it produces electricity it has hydration obviously and protects the the area here from flooding all right we are at the fillet temple we're going to check this out robin what do you think yep we're going to see what it's all about yeah supposedly this person the temples for it has it was magical a lot of stuff the whole place here is run by the Nubian people what they do here is just the right to the temple because the temple is blocked. With the, I mean, the, the temple is stuck between the high dam and the old dam. Are you okay? <laughs> What's your headset? Yeah, yeah. You told me, and then I do it anyway, right? <laughs> you okay? So we're taking a boat ride to the temple. That's a lot of boats out there. Another day, another ancient Egyptian temple. Also, that these walls are just covered with hieroglyphics. Civilization is a temple dedicated for the cult, the worshiping of the goddess Isis, the goddess of magic, goddess of love, goddess of sacrifice, loyalty, goddess of healing of it. Ancient graffiti, I guess you could say. We're not ancient, but back in the Napoleon time, yeah, actually, this is a Napoleon campaign uh, ad that was put on this beautiful temple. So, as you can see, even though this is ancient Egyptian symbols, uh, the Christians took over after a while. So, there's some Greek stuff in here, there's some Christian stuff in here. Because um, over the years, people who took over put their little sign on some of this stuff. So this is called the Hall of Columns because there's obviously a lot of columns and there is evidence that the Christians came here. They turned this from a temple to Isis, this part, and turned it into a, a, a Christian temple. And actually, this is where they would give the communion out right here. So you are now in the sanctuary, which is a very royal place because only the king was really allowed in here. And this is, this monument used to have a statue of gold of Isis on here and the king would come in here and pray. But we're all royalty now because this room was only allowed for, <laughs> uh, this room was only allowed for the king. This kid is a presentation of Paul Rest, but he's Amazing a lot of rooms in this place too, in this temple. Trajan the Roman emperor from the second century. A little bit of a wide angle shot here just to give you the significance of the temple. Back on the boat, but we're going to have another nice view of the temple from the water here. What do you think of the temple, Rob? Very cool. It's going to be our home for the next four days. This is the King George boat that's going to take us down the, the Nile. All right, this is it.
All right, so we made it to our room on the boat. This is Robin. Robin, you want to say hi? Hi. So this is the room. It's a little small, but you know, we have to remember we're on a boat. They gave us a couple little bottles of wine, so I like anyone who does that. And a little bit of fruit. That's our view, but obviously that'll change because it's a boat. Got a little coffee place here, little table, TV. I have to find a place to set up my computer. Not sure what I'm gonna do about that yet. Mini bar in the bathroom, let's see. Let's see what the bathroom has in here. Is there a light over here? Uh, here we go. Oh, it's not bad. It's a decent size shower. And uh, just bang myself. There I am. There's Robin. And it looks pretty cool. But it looks good. I think this is going to work out. What do you think? Yeah. All right. This is our home for four days. It's like on the level of our where our room is. It looks pretty cool. We just had an awesome vegan lunch here. They have other things. But they actually gave us the, a vegan lunch because... They cooked it special for us, which I thought was really nice. So on the St. George, they were also very nice to make us a special vegan dessert. Because the rest of the desserts up there probably aren't vegan, but for us, they made them for that. So Robin, what do you think of your dessert? It's like pretty darn yummy. Feels a little hot out here. This little store. So we're going up to the deck. On the deck of the St. George. It's really nice up here, but it is a little hot. So it's got a pool and it's got a shallow pool, pretty shallow, and then a hot tub. So we are at the Souk, which is a market. quiet in the market because of Ramadan, but usually this place would just be packed. <laughs> so we're going to the cataract, the old cataract hotel, and it's very famous. A lot of people go here, so we're going to check it out for a drink or something. This is just an amazing view right here. So someone told me this is what heaven looks like. I think they're right. Absolutely beautiful sunset. To the welcome reception. Hi. Good How you doing? How you doing? Good evening. How are you? A welcome reception. A little bit of a show here. This is our view at breakfast. Pretty nice. All right, we're off the ship and we're in Con Ombo. See up there, so you'll see up here, that's the god of Sobek and he looks like a crocodile. That block right there, I'm going to show you closer, is the first calendar that was ever created in the world. We're busy here because it's so important, but this is the first calendar ever developed. Pretty amazing. 22, because this wall was much higher, it was the same level like this one, but it's broken, unfortunately. But here we have the day, because the circle is the sun. So day 22, day 23, day 24, day 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, here. 10, 10, and the circle was aligned to so 29. And then the last day of the month is 
Bah. Bah, we still have this word in Arabic. So the colors up there, the, the colors were all over this whole thing in the beginning, but you know, they get rid of the way over time. That's why it looks plain like this, but this was very, very colorful back in the day. So this temple had two gods, and the god over there would be the falcon god, and the god over here would be the crocodile god, and they were there, the statues were there, but they're not there anymore. Hieroglyphics, she shows that they actually did surgeries and stuff like that. They did some medical healing when, uh, you know, back in back in the ancient times. See the suction cups, roll of papyrus, scissor, sponge, forceps, eye of forest for spiritual healing, balance for weighing the medicine. And you can see from here up to the upper, upper register, you can see different kind of forceps, lancets, shows, knives of different kinds. They, use, they will all be used in the surgery and mummification process. These are some amazing hieroglyphics there. So under what we're standing on right now, this is next to the temple over there. Um, there's actually a temple underground here and they think it's a thousand years older than the temple behind me. And the problem is if they try to dig it out, then it would probably collapse the temple behind me, so they can't dig it out. But I think they think it might be um, for Ramses II. So pretty interesting that we're actually walking on top of this temple right now. Very deep well. I'm gonna try not to drop my phone. That really goes down pretty far. A little more of Kam Umbo here. That's the well we just saw, what it looks like. Just a little more information for you. If you want to pause the video and look at this, you can. Believe it or not, these are crocodile mummies. They're mummified crocodiles. Pretty cool. The big one right here looks like he's smiling a little bit. The hieroglyphic about the crocodile god. We're on the move again. Goodbye, temple. Well, I think our parents went to our Yeah, stars. my parents. We love I love them. Yeah. We've been there a few times before because you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're gonna go. You know, we've seen all the touristy things, so we're looking for other things. So we're gonna go to Borough Market. Are you guys all sisters? Yeah, we are. Oh wow. How old are you? So I'm twenty. I'm twenty-one. I'm thirteen. 30? <laughs> 13. 13, okay. Yeah. She's a baby. Yeah. Wow. So you guys are doing a trip with your parents? To yeah, it's that 25th wedding anniversary trip, but we managed to get an invite to. <laughs> 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 we sneaked on. Oh, that's funny. So how long have you been in San Diego? Uh, just two years, really. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Are you good surfers? So. Not yet. Not yet. We don't, we don't know if we're going to try it or not. The water's so cold. Is it? That looks like it's close, doesn't it? <laughs> Going under a bridge. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the Nile. Rolling down the Nile. We are on our way to Edfu. That will be our next stop on this River Nile cruise. You can see the Nubians on the beach over there and the animals. Really cool greenery right here. Dock at Edfu. You ready for this, Robin? I'm ready for Edfu. Let's go. We're gonna get on a horse and buggy ride, it looks like, to get to the temple. A lot of horse and buggy rides there. It's the only way to get to the temple, unfortunately. All right, we're on the horse and buggy ride. How you doing, Robin? I'm doing okay. We're on a horse and buggy ride. Yeah, it's a little hot out. It's 106 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a 
funeral. So I guess that's a funeral, huh? So this is Edfu, and it's the most preserved temple in Egypt. So you can see the colors are still there because this is so well preserved, it was under sand. And hopefully you can get this, it's a little sunny out, but hopefully you're able to see the colors are, are still there. And so the, all the other temples we see that look gray were actually very colorful in their time, but they just went gray because of erosion and all that over time. But here, because it was preserved in sand, it actually, you can see the colors. This thing is huge. You can see from the people, you can see how big this temple is. That is so tall up there. You can't see that from the video, but that is really tall. It's like over 100 feet. It's Anubis right there, the god of the jackal. So we're going to go in this library. Very small library. Very small. <laughs> Looks different than any library I remember. Red, yellow, turquoise, green, blue, white, and black. Now it's completely black. So this was a shrine of the temple. And uh, Looks pretty cool. It's a little cramped in here. This leads up to the roof, but the roof is pretty much closed, but at least we can go up part way up the staircase. back down. Riding back from the temple to the city of Edfu and heading back to the boat. Okay, so we're temporarily stopped at Esna, the city of Esna, and then early tomorrow morning we'll move on to Luxor, but we can get off and check out the city if we want. What do you think, Robin? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You know, we're a little tired. It's... Well, we're not tired. There's a party on the boat tonight. Oh, there's a party on the boat tonight, but also, you know, the, the, the energy does get zapped from you a little bit because it's like 106 degrees out during the day so but anyway but well, we might go to the party we might go on esna we'll see we're walking around esna what do you think robin well, i haven't seen it yet i'll let you know when i see it right once we get past this gate we'll be at esna this is a very active road here i'm not sure what everyone's going or what they're doing but it's very active On the move again, and into Luxor. Okay, we are in Luxor and ready for an adventure, right? Yeah. It's 
so we're in Luxor and we are visiting the Valley of the Kings. Robin, what do you think? Very excited to see it. Yep, this is where King Tut is. Heading up to the Valley of the Kings. We're in the Valley of the Kings and you notice the mountain looks like a pyramid up there. The tombs are underneath there. All right, so we're going to the first tomb here, Mori Empeta, who is actually the son of Ramses II, who's the one that you know, dealt with Moses in the time. So this is going to be a very interesting tomb. Ramses II's tomb is actually closed. It's very deep and, and it kind of goes down and it just is not open to the public. So I don't think it's safe. But we're going to go check out his son's tomb. Robin, anything? probably can't really see this but we're really going down it's a pretty nice incline here because that's how they built the tombs it just went down you see how colorful it is here because these colors have been preserved because they've been under the ground so some of the other temples we saw you didn't see the colors because they got wiped off these are all the original colors they didn't touch up anything here I believe this is a sarcophagus right here, which is probably where they put the body. Actually, be the sarcophagus. This is huge. Uh, you can kind of see a person in there, so you can see how big it is. But this is probably where the body was. A wide-angle version of this, so you can see how big this sarcophagus is. The room is kind of dark. Not sure what's in here. Cool etchings on that. There's the sarcophagus. Looks pretty cool. All right, on to the next tomb. Getting ready to go to the tomb of Ramses the Ninth. the original colors so they didn't touch up anything here so these colors have really been preserved for thousands and thousands of years i have to say there's just so many tombs here it's just it's unreal the boat where the king goes to the afterlife this is on the wide angle so you can get a little more of a perception of what how wide this is and how many people are in here today all the hieroglyphics there's the king in the cheetah skin the cheetah skin was put on because it made you go fast because the cheetah is the fastest animal in the world and so they put the cheetah skin in so that it would make going into the afterlife faster this is where the body was sort of the bottom of the crypt we're going to go visit one of the tombs of a queen, and there's a king in there too, so there's actually two sarcophagus in here. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. This is the tomb of Khusr, and Seth, no, Khusr is the queen. Another day, another multi-thousand-year-old ancient Egyptian tomb. And also the other organs are putting those jars there. Sarcophagus right there. So now for the finale, we're going to go see King Tut's tomb. And the mummy is actually still in there. So this is going to be an amazing look. The tomb is small because uh, he died young and they had to build the tomb out you know, during his lifetime. So he, he didn't live that long. So the tomb is small, but it's colorful and it has his mummy in there. And obviously 
He's a famous guy. So here's the entrance to the tomb, and this is the only tomb that was untouched when we got here. A lot of the tombs have been robbed of all their gold and stuff, but this one was the only one that was actually untouched and had everything in it when they went in there. Visiting King Tut's tomb has been a long-term childhood dream of mine. And here I am at 60, almost 60, two years old, 61 years old, and I'm gonna be in the tomb. So this is amazing. So that's the mummy of King Tut. That's where the sarcophagus is. If you want to know more about King Tut, you can stop the video and read this. I'm gonna just go through here. And you can always read this when you pause the video. It's great, yeah. That's a lifelong dream of mine to see that tomb. All right, so we're gonna to go to the temple of Hat Cheap Soup, and she actually was the longest ruling pharaoh, female pharaoh in Egypt. This structure we're gonna see right over there is 3,500 years old. So we're gonna take a closer look at it. A couple of sphinxes here, but this whole place was lined by sphinxes. But I guess they've been moved somewhere in the museum, so damaged, but that's where they went. This is the Chapel of Anubis. Oh, that's the ceiling up there. Still with the colors in it. So that symbol I just showed you shows Hatchitsu. And that's the only thing that shows that this is her temple because her stepson, who was very angry with her, got rid of every picture of her in this temple when he took over as king. You probably can't see it that well, but there's a scale up there that shows like gold being weighed and animals, so they trade animals for gold. Egypt had a lot of gold, and so they traded for other things. And this is like one of the first hair dyes, I guess. This is henna, and they actually traded it back then. Now we are at the Valley of the Queens, so we're going to check Nefertari's tomb out. This is Nefertari's tomb we're going into. If you want to read this, you can always pause the video. This is very colorful in here. colors here are just amazing. I've never seen the colors like this in any of the tombs that we've seen before. What do you think, Robin? It's pretty amazing. Yeah, isn't it? They're doing some work on this one. looks a little odd, the big head. So Nefertari was the queen of Ramses II. That's the one, the whole Moses story that you hear. And he loved her so much, that even though he was married to about 50 wives, she was his favorite. And you could see he just did an amazing tomb here for her. I mean, this is like the most brilliant, amazing tomb in all of Egypt cartouche for Nefertari. This shows that they, they, they play chess. Nefertari's crying right there. Look around, you notice there's these little box type things, little rectangles 
all over the place. You can see a bunch of them here. Each one of these signifies a tomb. So there's an awful lot of tombs here. I think over 70. Hi. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Have you been to the Valley of the Kings? Yes. Yeah, we bring it as a big box, like as you see, around 60 miles. See, this is the You can tell how. So we were in West Luxor earlier today, now we're in East Luxor and we're at the Karnak temples. This is the biggest temple in Egypt and in the ancient world. So this is going to be one big temple. So some of this temple was built, was, they started 4,000 years ago and it took them 2,000 years to finish it. So, you know, it's a long time, but uh, so it went from, you know, 4,000 years old and some of the stuff is just 2,000 years old. So there's a row of sphinxes here leading into the temple, as you could see. That's a lot of sphinxes. These sphinxes are a little different. It's a ram head on the body of a lion. This is Ramses II right there. So obviously he's a very important pharaoh. This is one tall wall. Also known as 130 some feet. So how did they get the bricks that high back thousands of years ago? Same thing with the pyramids. What they did is they built mud brick scaffolding and they actually have a little bit of that here that they didn't take away. So they would build the scaffolding. It would be like a ramp of mud brick. They bring the bricks up and then when they were done, they would start to take the, the bricks away to clean it all up. And I'll show you real quick, quick, one of the mud brick ramps that are still here. And there it is. So you can see that's not supposed to be there, but they didn't have time to clear it off back when they finished here. But in most of these, there was mud brick ramps up here when they did it and they cleared it off. Actually a King Tut Sphinx. That's Ramses II. That's a really tall statue. This is temple is sort of like traveling back in time. When we first came in, it was like the 8th to 10th century BC. And now we're back into the Ramses II time. And there is a ton of columns here that he built. So I'm going to show you those. top of these look like papyrus flowers and there's over a hundred of these things because what Ramses II wanted to do was to make this look like a forest in Egypt. The huge obelisk. Another shot of this. So who was it again? Uh, the okay. That's Tutankhamen right there, and his wife. And this is his portion of the temple. This is the ancient lake behind me here. It's a rather big bug. We were at the Luxor temple. All statues of Ramses II. Nice monolith too. There's all the sphinxes that in the day went all the way to the Kempler temple. There you can see a mosque and that is a door. So the ground level was actually up there at one point. Below that would be, was a Christian church and below that was a temple of Amun-Ra. So three things in one. Another statue of King Tut and his wife. So this temple actually has four religions here. Like ancient Egyptians, the Greeks, and Christianity and Islam. As you can see the pictures of the Romans right here, which this is a Roman Colosseum or a Roman temple. University of Chicago actually helps clean these walls up. This was the sanctuary where the God was back on the boat.
Well, we're done with the pool. We're almost done with the boat. We're gonna be getting off tomorrow morning, but it was awesome. Last night on the boat. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Hi, thank you. Well, we made it to Sharm El Shack. All right, well, we just got to our room in Sharm El Shack, and it looks a little funny. They know it's our birthdays. Robin's was in late March, and mine is in April, and it hasn't happened yet. But our travel agent, I guess, uh, took a little, had a little fun and, and did our room up here in. In, our, in a birthday theme. Someone put a bunch of balloons and a cake. That's like a cake made out of towels. Happy birthday. More balloons. I think they had a lot of fun with this. Then they gave us a little real cake and then some looks like some chocolates and those look like they're vegan because they're dark chocolate so looks like we'll be able to eat them just going to show you the view from our deck we got this nice little deck here and the view is pretty nice you got the pool the ocean's right over there we got settled and now we're gonna take a little walk to the beach hopefully we can hang out here for a little while what do you think robin yeah we're gonna check it out yeah we need to relax a little bit because it's been go 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 since we've been on this trip and it's been a few weeks of just non-stop going to places and walking in the extreme heat. So this is going to be kind of nice to just relax and sit by the ocean. Welcome to Sharmar Shack. Now this is what I call a vacation. So that island right in front of us is actually Saudi Arabia. So that's how close it is to Egypt. Robin's excited because she got tissues. That's an awesome thing because we ran out of tissues, right? Arsha. This is a little like bar, I guess, that you can go to and get a great view. And it's one of the last things we're going to do when we're in Egypt. What do you think, Robin? Yep, well, check it out. Yep, tomorrow we have an early flight back to Cairo and then off to London. So this is one of the last things we're going to do. A lot of people down there. You can hear they're kicking out some interesting music here it's pretty cool just all sorts of stuff just lying around it's like a treasure or something it's a very interesting bar Oh, are oh, you gonna? Okay, you can go first. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a really big bar here. One cool observation is with all the wars going on and things going on and the divisiveness and all that other stuff, this place is so international. There are people from all over the world just hanging out and enjoying themselves and being friendly with each other and it just really warms my heart. All right, we're in Old Town Sharm el -Shek. We're just going to take a look around. Robin, what do you think? Yeah, we're going to see what's going on here. A lot of Russian 
letters. Around. Yeah, I guess the Russians come here a lot, although I don't know about now because of what's going on, but I think in the past they've been here. The old foot locker over there. Yeah. I had to wide angle this mosque because it's huge. But they're starting to do the prayer. This is right, you know, because it's Ramadan. This is uh, people now able to get out and do stuff. So we're going to the square in Shomershek. And it's pretty lit up here. It's kind of pretty. Ram, what do you think? Yeah, we're going to check it out. Those are big glasses. Man, there are lights everywhere here. Well, that was a long one, but that's a wrap on Egypt, and I hope you really enjoyed it. I know it was a long video, but there was just so much to do in Egypt, as you can tell from watching the video. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, because that way YouTube will push it out to other people who can benefit from it. And make sure if you have any comments or any suggestions or Anything, any place that you want me to go and vlog, or if you have places that you went that you just loved and you want to share, please put them in the comments below and I will meet you down there shortly. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell notification so you'll be notified every time I put out a healthy living video. And if you know anybody who can use videos like this one, make sure you share the video and the, the channel with them so they can join in all the fun. And for more tips on how to live a happier, healthier life, two videos are going to pop up any moment and you can click on any of those videos and you can continue your happy, healthy living journey. And I will see you all next time.